Ah, what's up guys, Enigma here. And today I'm going to be telling you the real life story of a man who would, in the dead of night, break into homes dressed in a rubber mask just like this one and sexually assault people. Not only this, but he was actually known to stalk his victims in a similar fashion to a famous movie character. The story of the Beast of Jersey would, in part, go on to inspire the costume and traits of Michael Myers. Probably the greatest scary movie villain of all time. The resemblance of the costume is uncanny. The extent of the terrors committed by the Beast of Jersey were thought to be known until recently when an inquest was held that actually found that among all of the despicable acts he committed, he would also prowl the halls of children's care homes dressed in his rubber mask looking for victims. Children who had by this point grown into adults recalled seeing this face in the dead of night peering into their rooms through the keyhole, lit by a flickering light. It seemed like something straight out of a horror movie. This is the story of the Beast of Jersey, the real life Michael Myers. The Beast of Jersey was known to watch his victims for large periods of time, staring at them whilst they slept, and would sometimes go days or even weeks before striking them. In the 1960s, Edward Paisenel, son-in-law to the owner of La Preference Children's Home, which was located on the island of Jersey, was a regular visitor who would often help around with bits of maintenance, even dressing once as Father Christmas for their Christmas party. However, when night came, children reported hearing faint creaks in the floorboards and would often see shapes moving outside the door. The boogeyman was indeed at large in the house and every night it would be the same thing. The children would be lying in their beds and the sounds would continue. The children who dared to open their eyes to observe what was going on would often see a rubber mask looking in on them through the keyhole. Children in the attic rooms would see the same face only this time through the floorboards below them. Imagine lying in bed and looking down only to see a mask staring back at you. It's terrifying. This would go on for nights, weeks, and sometimes months on end. If they were lucky, they would only see the shape peering in on their bedroom at night. The children who weren't so lucky would, at the dead of night, be pulled from their beds by their feet and dragged away. Many children shared rooms and would often see their friends being taken away by the boogeyman, sometimes never to return. No one suspected Edward, for the shape wore a mask and so no identifiable features could be noted. The main reason why Edward was allowed to reign free for so long was that all eyes were focused on a local fisherman named Alfonso Legastelis, and he was known for going on walks in the middle of the night. And despite the police regularly searching his house and basically harassing him for over a year, the public was so convinced that it was him that they literally burned his home to the ground. Gastelois, fearing for his life, forced himself into exile to a faraway place, and that's how they actually managed to clear his name. Name. The attacks continued whilst he was away. So who was it? It would actually take an entire decade after this before the police could capture the real life boogeyman. And this all happened to sheer happenstance. He was pulled over by the police on a routine traffic stop where they found the terrifying latex mask and creepy outfit in his car. He was then arrested and sentenced to 30 years for numerous hideous crimes. At least 30 sleeping children awoke to themselves being dragged by their feet at the dead of night by this shape wearing this horrifying mask. He would then assault the children in the most severe way before threatening to pay them a visit again if they spoke of what happened. This was thought to be the extent of his crimes until 2008, where the decomposing remains of several children were found beneath the cellar floor of another Jersey care home. Not only this, but bones and teeth of 65 different children were found in the cellar and surrounding fields. Both of these child care homes where the attacks took place are still open and in operation to this very day. And who knows what other bodies lay beneath. And sadly, the Hall de la Garine children's home, after being visited by the Beast of Jersey, was later visited by the notorious child abuser Jimmy Savile. Corruption by the staff of the care homes and the police was suspected, as Edward was able to commit huge amounts of crimes whilst going undetected. 
Surely the numerous missing children from the area would raise some form of suspicion. Why did the care homes not report it? And why did no one notice when potentially 65 children went missing from a single care home? Apparently the police and care home staff were keen to hush up the murders and abuse cases. So much so that the Jersey police chief was suspended over links to the crimes. The link between Edward and the second care home was not really well known. But the method of the attacks are very similar. And it is thought that he must have had a confidant within the home as he was allowed such free entry in what was supposed to be a secure location. The Beast of Jersey is sadly one of the many terrifying examples of negligence and inaction by the police which allowed, if true, one of the most prolific serial killers in the world to strike. If the estimates are correct, he could have killed 65 children which would make him one of the world's most prolific serial killers. Not only that, but these were all children, which would make him the most notorious child killer in history. And unlike others, he went completely undetected, with suspect killings only being discovered years after his death. He was never charged with any murders, so if not him, who could have put what seemed to be dead bodies in the ground? All we know is that a boogeyman did it. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I know it's a bit different from usual, so please do let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.